Platonism is a philosophy that finds its ultimate inspiration from Plato. It's based primarily on a reading of Plato's dialogues. Platonism is characterized by an intense concern for the quality of human life, always ethical, often religious, and sometimes political. It's based on a belief in unchanging and eternal realities, which Plato called forms. These forms are independent of the changing things of the world perceived by the senses. Platonism sees these realities both as the causes of the existence of everything in the universe and as giving value and meaning to its contents in general and the life of its inhabitants in particular. It is this belief in absolute values rooted in an eternal world that distinguishes Platonism from the philosophies of Plato's immediate predecessors and successors. Aristotelianism is a philosophical tradition inspired by the work of Aristotle, a famous Greek philosopher. This school of thought is characterized by its use of deductive logic and an analytic inductive method in the study of natural philosophy and metaphysics. One of the key concepts in Aristotelianism is the idea of hylomorphism. This is the theory that a particular substance is a combination of both matter and form. In simpler terms, everything in the world is made up of matter, the stuff things are made of, and form, the arrangement or design of that matter. Another important concept is the idea of four causes. These are the material cause, what something is made of, the formal cause, the shape or form a thing takes, the efficient cause, the thing or process that brings something into being, and the final cause, the purpose or function of a thing. Stoicism is an ancient school of philosophy that originated in Greece and later flourished in Rome. The Stoics believed that virtue, specifically wisdom, courage, moderation, and justice, is the only good, and that practicing these virtues is enough to achieve a well-lived life, also known as eudaimonia. The Stoics taught that external things, such as health, wealth, and pleasure, are not good or bad in themselves, but have value as material for virtue to act upon. They emphasized that a sage, a person who has achieved moral and intellectual perfection, would be emotionally resilient to misfortune. Stoicism encourages us to live in accordance with nature and reason, and it holds that destructive emotions result from errors in judgment. Epicureanism is a philosophy that was taught by Epicurus around 307 BCE. It's a system of ethics that embraces every conception or form of life that can be traced to the principles of his philosophy. In popular parlance, Epicureanism means devotion to pleasure, comfort, and high living. Epicurus was an atomist and materialist, following in the steps of Democritus. His materialism led him to religious skepticism and a general attack on superstition and divine intervention. Epicurus believed that the greatest good was to seek modest, sustainable pleasure in the form of a state of ataraxia, tranquility and freedom from fear, and aponia, the absence of bodily pain, through knowledge of the workings of the world and limiting desires. Skepticism, in the realm of Western philosophy, is all about doubting and questioning different knowledge claims. The skeptics challenge the reliability of these claims by asking what principles they are based upon or what they actually establish. The term skeptic comes from the Greek word skeptikos, which means an inquirer. It was used to describe someone who was unsatisfied and still looking for truth. So, skeptics are essentially truth seekers, they question everything, and they're not easily convinced without solid evidence. One of the most interesting aspects of skepticism is that it even rejects knowledge claims that seem very plausible and belong to basic common sense. This is sometimes referred to as radical doubt. For instance, a skeptic might even question the belief that the sun will come out tomorrow, because although it's highly likely based on our past experiences, it's not 100% certain. Neoplatonism is a philosophical system that emerged in the 3rd century AD. It was given its definitive shape by Plotinus, a great philosophical and religious genius. The philosophers who are generally classified as Neoplatonists called themselves simple Platonists. The central idea of Neoplatonism is monism, the doctrine that all of reality can be derived from a single principle, the One. This concept suggests that everything we see and experience in our world 
emanates from this single source. Scholasticism isn't a single philosophy or theology, but rather a method of learning. It was developed by medieval Christian thinkers who sought to reconcile faith with reason. They aimed to solve philosophical problems, such as the relationship between faith and reason, will and intellect, and the existence of God. The scholastics, as they were known, initially drew from the mystical and intuitional tradition of patristic philosophy, especially Augustinianism. Later, they incorporated the teachings of Aristotle. Scholasticism emphasized the use of dialectic, a method of argument for resolving disagreement. Its main purpose was to find answers to questions or resolve contradictions. This method was quite different from modern science, which is based on observations from nature. Humanism is a philosophical school of thought that places a strong emphasis on human values and potential. Originating during the Renaissance, it was a system of education and mode of inquiry that later spread throughout Europe and England. Humanism is based on the ideal of humanitas, which means the development of human virtue in all its forms. This includes qualities associated with humanity, such as understanding, benevolence, compassion, and mercy, but also more assertive characteristics like fortitude, judgment, prudence, eloquence, and even love of honor. Rationalism asserts that reason is the primary source of knowledge. It suggests that reality itself has an inherently logical structure, and there are truths that our intellect can grasp directly. These truths are so fundamental that denying them leads to contradiction. For example, principles in logic, mathematics, ethics, and metaphysics are considered rational truths. An interesting aspect of rationalism is its confidence in reason and proof, which tends to detract from their respect for other ways of knowing. This confidence leads to the belief that empirical proof and physical evidence are unnecessary to ascertain certain truths. Empiricism is a school of philosophy that believes our knowledge comes primarily, if not solely, from sensory experience. It's like saying, seeing is believing. Empiricists argue that the best way to learn and understand the world is through our five senses, sight, hearing, smell, taste, and touch. This philosophy contrasts with the idea of innate knowledge, knowledge we're born with, or knowledge gained through intuition or revelation. Instead, empiricists often use the metaphor of the mind as a blank slate at birth, which is then filled in by experiences over time. Kantianism is a philosophical school of thought that originated from the writings of the 18th century philosopher Immanuel Kant. It's a system that explores the nature and limits of human knowledge, aiming to elevate philosophy to the level of a science. At its core, Kantianism is concerned with the principles of knowledge and morality. It emphasizes the role of the mind in structuring our experiences and understanding of the world. One of the key concepts in Kantianism is the categorical imperative. This principle states that we should act in such a way that you treat humanity, never merely as a means to an end, but always at the same time as an end. Hegelianism is a philosophical movement that developed from the ideas of the 19th century German philosopher Georg Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel. It's important to note that the term Hegelianism is used to refer to the movements that followed Hegel's thought, rather than Hegel's own philosophy. Hegel's philosophy places ultimate reality in ideas rather than in things. This means that the true nature of reality is found in our thoughts and concepts not in the physical objects around us. Hegel used a method called the dialectic to understand this reality. The dialectic involves a process of argument and counter-argument, or thesis and antithesis, leading to a synthesis that combines the two. This synthesis then becomes the new thesis for the next stage of the process. Existentialism is a philosophy that emphasizes individual existence, freedom, and choice. It is the view that humans define their own meaning in life and try to make rational decisions despite existing in an irrational universe. It focuses on the question of human existence and the feeling that there is no purpose or explanation at the core of existence. Existentialism suggests that we are not complete in the sense that we are not what we are and we are what we are not. 
This philosophy shows that humans are always in the process of becoming. In some ways, existentialism is an approach to philosophy that shows how deeply human beings are embedded in the world. One of the main themes of existentialism is the emphasis on individual freedom, choice, and responsibility. Structuralism is a school of thought in philosophy and social sciences that interprets elements of human culture by their relationship to a broader system. It aims to uncover the structural patterns that underlie all the things that humans do, think, perceive, and feel. In simpler terms, imagine you're looking at a beautiful painting. Instead of focusing on each individual brushstroke, structuralism encourages us to step back and see the bigger picture. It's about understanding how each part contributes to the overall structure. Post-structuralism is a movement in philosophy and literary criticism that began in France in the late 1960s. It challenges the idea that language is a transparent medium that connects us directly with a truth or reality outside of it. Instead, it suggests that language is a structure or code where parts derive their meaning from their contrast with one another. Phenomenology is a philosophical movement that originated in the 20th century. Its primary objective is the direct investigation and description of phenomena as consciously experienced, without theories about their causal explanation, and as free as possible from unexamined preconceptions and presuppositions. In other words, it's all about taking a fresh approach to concretely experienced phenomena, an approach as free as possible from conceptual presuppositions, and trying to describe them as faithfully as possible. Analytic philosophy is a major school of thought that has been dominant in Western philosophy since the 20th century. It's known for its clarity of prose and rigorous arguments. This school of philosophy often uses formal logic and mathematics, and to a lesser extent, the natural sciences. Analytic philosophy originated from the works of philosophers like Gottlob Frege, Bertrand Russell, G. E. Moore, and Ludwig Wittgenstein. It started with a focus on semantics, conceptual analysis, and formal representation of natural language. This later developed into several new branches of philosophy, including modern predicate logic, philosophy of mathematics and mathematical logic, and philosophy of science. 